Hello students, it's Shayna, your teacher at EspressoEnglish.net, and I'm here with another phrasal verb of the day. Today we're going to learn tip over. If you've been enjoying learning these phrasal verbs and you want to learn a lot more, then come join my Phrasal Verbs in Conversation course. You can get more information and sign up by clicking the link in this video or in the description. Okay, let's learn about tip over. Does it mean A, be destroyed, B, fall to the side, or C, shake slightly? Only one of these three definitions is correct. So I'm going to describe a situation using this phrasal verb, and I want you to guess whether A, B, or C is the correct definition for tip over. You can post your answer in the comments, and then keep watching to find out if you're correct. Here's the example. The other day, here uh, at home, we were moving some things around, so carrying some objects from one room to another. And while I was carrying something, I wasn't looking where I was going, and I bumped into a table. And there was a lamp on the table. And when I bumped into the table, the lamp started to tip over. But fortunately, my husband saw this happening and he was able to grab the lamp before it broke. Based on this example, what does it mean to tip over A, B, or C? I'll tell you the correct answer in just a moment. Are you ready to find out? Tip over means B, fall to the side. So in this situation, I bumped into a table. That means my body um, collided with, hit a table. And then the lamp that was standing on the table started to tip over, started to fall to the side. And luckily, my husband caught it before it broke. We usually use tip over for objects falling to the side, not people. With people, we usually say the person fell over or fell down. But with objects like the lamp, then we can use tip over. Another situation that has sometimes happens to me is when I have a glass of water and I put the glass down on the table, but I'm not paying attention. And when I put the glass down, part of the bottom of the glass is on the table and then part of it is on top of a magazine. And so the bottom of the glass is not level and the glass starts to tip over. That's another situation where you can use this phrasal verb. Now, some of you might be wondering about the difference between tip over and a similar phrasal verb, knock over, okay? Knock over is used uh, when there is always an impact, okay? So if someone is running to catch a train and they collide with me and cause me to fall down, then that person knocked me over. Or using the glass of water example, if uh, my glass of water is standing on the table but my cat uh, accidentally hits the glass and knocks it over, again, there's an impact. So knock over is used when there's an impact. Tip over can be used when there's an impact, but it can also be used when the object tips over by itself. So another example would be if I'm making a stack of books and I put a really heavy book on the top, then that stack of books might tip over. It might fall to the side by itself. Okay, I hope this has helped you learn what it means to tip over and understand the difference between tip over and knock over. Try to use this phrasal verb in your own English. So post a comment with a sentence using tip over, or if you'd like to try using the phrasal verb knock over, which means to make something fall with an impact, then you can do that too. I look forward to reading your comments. And again, if you'd like to join my phrasal verbs in conversation course, click on the link in this video. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.